Good morning, good morning, good morning. <laughs> this is Dr. Herbert Harris. Welcome each and every one of you to our success mentorship class number 192. And our topic for today is commitment to action. And let me give us an affirmation for today. <laughs> I'm going to look at affirmation number three from our 12 affirmations to live by in our book, The 12 Universal Laws of Success. And affirmation number three says, I define my purpose and reason for living. I define my purpose and reason for living. Wow. So as we go on today, let us define our purpose and our reason for living. Let's get it done. Over the last really four weeks, this is the fourth lesson in our series, New You for the New Year. And if we look back over the last four weeks, we have dealt with a number of powerful topics. Number one, we started with face the facts. In other words, assess and address where you are right now. To look at your condition, to look at your situation, and use that Ben Franklin method. When we look at how we performed this last year, whether we had victories, things that we accomplished, things that we did successfully, or we had lessons, things that did not work, things that we don't want to do again. So we either have victories and lessons. And in that first lecture, we talked about the fact that if you had more victories than lessons, then you're in good shape. Make some minor adjustments and go forward. But on the other hand, if you had more lessons than victories, then you may need a checkup from the neck up, from the heart down. Welcome, Dr. Mansa Musa. Thank you on Instagram. So this idea of assess and address to figure out where we are right now. The second lecture in this series was called Setting the Sales for Change. To make that decision that once you've looked at where you are and your, your state of being, your accomplishments, your lessons, the things that did work and the things that did not work, that you now change your attitude. Your attitude of the sales that guide you through life. You look at your, your level of commitment, the engine that drives you across the sea of time. You look at your crew, the people who are with you on, your, on the boat of life. You look at the rudder, your moral values that guide you. And you make adjustments so that you can create in this new year, the new you. In the third lecture, we dealt with setting your goals, and the things you want to accomplish, setting your goals and objectives. And we talked about the fact that your goals must be smart, that your goals must really lay out specifically what you want to do, that they must be measurable, that they must be set in advance, that they must cover a certain time period. They must be realistic. And so now today, we're going to put it all together. The commitment to action, what you must actually do, and the frame of mind that you must have to go forward and make next year your year for outrageous success. So before we get started now, let us do our meditation so that we can get centered on where we are and what we must do. Let's just close our outer eyes. Open our inner eyes. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. Take a deep breath. Hold it. Let it out slowly. And then this state of relaxation. Our minds are rested and at peace. 
I am at peace with myself. Let us say that together. I am at peace with myself. Once more. I am at peace with myself. Just let that peace sink in. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And in this state of peace and relaxation, our minds are open, receptive, and ready to learn. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Let us affirm that together. My mind is open, receptive, and ready to learn. Take a deep breath. Let it out slowly. And so it is. You know, today I'm super excited because we're putting the, the, the cream on top of the cake. We are now at that point where we can actually go forth and make this year our year for great success. Let's see. We have a lot of people on Instagram with us. Yes, Prophet, thank you for being with us. Yes. And uh, to Roxdale, Prophet, yes, yes, yes. The idea now is that when we start our programs, I like to start with a quote. And the quote for today is really a profound one. And it comes from Jean-Paul Sartre. And the quote says, commitment is an act not a word. Now, that's a powerful statement because so many times we hear people talk about commitment. I am committed. Our company is committed to your success. We are committed to your health. I'm committed to the program, to the project. But I'll tell you this, when you hear people talk about commitment a lot, that might be a clue that that commitment is not as strong. Commitment is an act. You live it. You do it. Dennis Waitley said something profound. He said, commitment is the turning point in life. When you seize the moment and convert it into an opportunity to alter your destiny. Let's say this again. Commitment is that turning point in life. When you seize the moment and convert it into an opportunity to alter your destiny. Now, folks, if there's one thing I want you to remember today. Is that you can always create a new ending to the story that is your life. You can't change the beginnings, but. You can change your attitude about the beginning, the way you look at the beginnings, but you have the power right now and right here to change the endings of your life. And that's what this year is all about, this new year. It's all about changing our destiny. It's all about creating the life that we want to live, creating that outrageous success that we want to experience. And so when we look at this, this idea of commitment, I want us to really get a feel for this because when Dennis Waitley said commitment is that opportunity, that turning point in your life, when you make a commitment to do something different, when you make a commitment to be something different, it changes everything. I like to think of the, the story of the, the chicken and the pig. One of the great master teachers was having a breakfast and he had his students there with him and they were talking about commitment. And one of the students was saying, you know, he was committed and, uh, you know, but what is the essence of commitment? How is commitment different, for example, from involvement? And so the master teacher, as he had his breakfast, he had grits and, you know, I mean, you, you may not make grits. A lot of you think of grits as cream of wheat, but down south, grits is a special thing. It's kind of like a cross between oatmeal and 
cream of wheat and sand. <laughs> okay. So he had grits, he had eggs, and he had bacon. And the master teacher said, now, as he tasted the eggs, the eggs were really good. He said, now, the chicken that laid these eggs that I'm enjoying is involved in my breakfast. But the pig who gave the bacon to my breakfast is committed to my breakfast. And the difference is, Involvement, that chicken can lay another egg another day. But commitment means you get it, it's all in. So that pig is committed. And that's what we're talking about. Being so committed to what you want to be, do, and have that it cannot fail to come. When we think about uh, commitment, and desire. Let's, let's kind of get this clear. We may desire success. And that simply means that we go for it. You know, our passion is there. But when we are committed to success, that means there's no other alternative. Think about this. You can be committed to success. You can be committed to a person. You can be committed to an idea. So think of breathing. This will give you a good picture of commitment and desire. You desire to breathe. But when it's only a desire, you can change your mind. <laughs> but this, think about this. The day you desire to stop breathing, you stop living. And so commitment is desire where there's no turning back. Commitment is desire where it has to happen. There are no other alternatives. And so we desire to breathe. We need to breathe to live. And so when we talk about desire and success, we must need success to so strongly that there are no options. So we begin now to, to set up for this new year. And we think about this. In order for us to change, to do the things we want to do this year and become the person we want to become, we must look at our thoughts. We must create thoughts that are congruent with where we want to go. We talked about our, our, our goals and objectives, so we must have thoughts that are congruent with our goals and objectives. We must look at our feelings, our emotions, so that our emotions are congruent with our feelings and objectives. We must look at our habits so that our habits can be congruent with our goals and our objectives. And finally, look at our relationship, the people we put around us, that they are congruent with our goals and our objectives. So as we begin to go forth, don't be too hard on yourself, because sometimes when you start analyzing and going through that assess and address process, you may focus so much on your failures and your disappointments, you start to beat yourself up. Don't do that. You see, recognize this, that you have the ability to create life like this exactly the way you want it. At the heart of commitment is choice. The success principle says, choose this day whom you will serve. You can choose either positivity and going forth into the future, or you can choose negativity to focus on the past and disappointments and failures. But you cannot choose both. You cannot serve success and failure. You cannot serve success and excuses. And so, a very profound part of what we become next year will deal with our choices, the choices that we make. Because we are where we are in our lives based on our choices and the actions we take on those choices. Every opportunity presents us with a choice. You know, the Chinese character for choice, for opportunity, is very much the same as the character for danger. And so as we go through life, we make choices 
opportunities or danger. The difference is how we make it, how we look at it, and how we approach it. We may not have total control over the external world, but we have total control over our attitude towards that world. And so let the attitude impact your choices. You know, as Thomas Edison, when the news reporter said, you failed over 3,000 times to identify this filament thing to make this light bulb work, Edison said, no, I've never failed. I have successfully identified 3,000 ways that will not work. So your attitude is key. Also, when we start thinking about what we want our life to look like next year, we must affirmatively identify what that good life means to us. You know, spiritually, we talk about the promised land. So what is your promised land? How do you want it to look? How do you want it to feel? And so one of the key things about creating the, the new you, the next year that's going to be your year for outrageous success, is to affirmatively identify what you need to be to accomplish that goal. So everybody says, I want to be happy. Well, wh wh what does happy mean? What does happy mean in terms of your finances? So maybe it means I want to have enough money that I don't have to worry about food and how to take care of my family. <laughs> what does happiness mean when it talks about your personal development? Maybe happiness means that you're in harmony with your diet, with your exercise, that you, you, you take proper care of your health. What does happiness mean when, when it comes to your profession? Are you going to a job every day that you hate or you want to go to one that you love? What does happiness mean when it, when it deals with your spirituality? What does it mean when it deals with your relationship to the community? And so whatever your goals are for this new year, you must look into them in such detail and such sensory detail that you can feel them, you can smell them, you can touch them, you know how the gold moves, you know what it sounds like. You see, the more of our senses that we can get involved with the goals that we want to accomplish over the next year, the more powerful it is. Another key point is to make a decision on what you will not do. And that leads us into our, our keys for today's lesson. That in order to create the, the person that you want to be, in order to be, do, and have that that you desire in this new year, it's important that you have a recipe. It's important that you have a roadmap to follow. Now, for those of you who do not have a copy of the 12 Universal Laws of Success, you need to get one because in the book, we share the roadmap to take you from where you are to where you want to be. And I like to think of it as the nine steps to becoming a success. Step number one, do not procrastinate. Now, that's very interesting. You know, I don't like negative affirmations. But when I was in Egypt, you know, uh, when we look back spiritually in the, in the Egyptian law, there was what they call the negative confessions, that in order to get into their version of uh, heaven, uh, the good life, you had to have the negative confessions. I have not lied. I have not stolen. I have not cheated. I have not... And it's important to look at negative confessions in a sense that there are things that you must choose to not do. And one of the things, the number one thing to choose to not do is to do not procrastinate. Don't wait until all conditions are right for you to move. And see, I, I like this negative confession because so many times we can cloak it so that it looks like it's okay. You know, when you hear a person saying, you know, uh, as soon as all my ducks are in a row, I'm going to be a success. As soon as this happens, as soon as that happens. And so the moment you put off to any time in the future what you need to do today, 
you're guilty of procrastination. And so you, you, you commit to not procrastinate by always knowing that you already have everything you need to get everything you want, that you possess the understanding, you possess the courage, you possess the confidence to take action now. Once again, procrastination is a choice. So be very circumspect about the things you will not do. Sometimes you must be so clear about what you will not do so that you can be open to what you will do, which leads us to the second step. Do it now. So these two, on these two <laughs> principles, on these two rules, <laughs> lay the foundation for success because these two rules indicate the act the execution of your great power of choice you choose not to procrastinate not to delude yourself into doing something next week that should have been done now and you commit to do it now that there's always something you can do right now that will move you closer to your dreams your goals your vision you know I love the spy talk. You know, they say uh, in the spy industry that like, you only know what you need to know. Like you're operating on a need to know basis. And so when you desire success, you must operate on that need to know basis. Now, what's the difference between need and desire? Okay. Or when does a desire become a need? Let's go back to breathing again. You may desire to need, to desire to breathe, okay? But to stay alive, you need to breathe. So a desire becomes a need when you can't live without it. You know, they, we talked about the young man in the water and he was trying to get an understanding for desire deep desire and when the master teacher held him on the water until he nearly drowned when he pulled him up and the young man took that first breath the master teacher said your desire must be that deep as de as bad as you want to breathe you got to want success so convert your desire to success for success into a need for success that you got to have it just like breathing so if it's wealth you got to have it if it's love, you got to have it. Whatever it is, to make it a need. So it's only success. When Nadia Kamenich was in the uh, gymnastics and her coach told her the only way she could win was to get a 10, a perfect score. And he said, you need a 10. And she said, I got a 10. In other words, she converted her desire into a need, so she had to perform on the level to get those desired results. So convert your need for success, your need for your goals, your need for your objectives. Convert your desire into a need. So it's only success, only accomplishment. Number three, you got to stand on your own two feet. One of the things that can really sidetrack us is when we depend on other people for our success. I mean, they're helpful. We know the mastermind principle that when two or more gather on one accord, I am that making power, that, that power that makes one plus one more than two is among them. But your commitment to success must be so strong that even if no one is there, you'll still find a way. Think about this. Big Sean, I'm, I'm a rap fan. I love to, to listen to rap music. And uh, Big Sean was working at a radio station and uh, Kanye West was going to be doing an interview there. Now, Big Sean could have asked the producer, could, you know, can you introduce me to Kanye West? Big Sean could have maybe talked to the, dis the, the DJ who was interviewing him and said, you know, can, can you hook me up? He could have depended on someone else for his success. But you know what Big, Big Sean did? 
it was his day off when Kanye came. He went in anyway. And when Kanye was coming out, he literally ran up to him and gave him his tape. He didn't wait for somebody else. So many times we have to do that. We have to have that type of commitment where you say, hey, I don't care what's going on. I don't care. I'm going to get what I got to do done. And that's exactly what he did. Think about Steve Jobs. We're talking about this. This is a very critical point because when you stand on your own two feet, you become so harmonic with your desires and your goals that you will attract the right people in your space. So you have to be first to attract. And when you be first, that means you're standing on your own two feet. Think about Steve Jobs. Now, this is Steve Jobs founded Apple. It was his baby. He and his buddies built the whole thing in the garage. The Apple Corporation was formed. They sold stock. It was a big company. And then, lo and behold, what was it, Scully, decided to fire Star Jobs. They set him down, put him out of his own company. Now, you know what? He could have thought, man, I really need my company to be successful and been depressed. But they put him out, and he stood on his own two feet. He went over to Pixar. And a lot of the animation and animated movies you see right now came out of the work he did at Pixar. So think about this. If he had not gotten fi fired, there may not have been a Toy Story. <laughs> Everything works for good. He was committed to stand on his own two feet. Anytime you put when and if after success, that's a challenge. I'll be successful when I get an agent. I'll be successful if I get selected to be on The Voice. Anytime there's when or if after success, that's a problem. Number four, do not fear failure. Winston Churchill said, success is the ability to move from failure to failure without losing your enthusiasm. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success. So if you've been failing a lot lately, the one thing it proves with inconvertibly is that you're trying. You don't fail unless you try. Nobody fails at chilling, <laughs> okay? Nobody fails at doing nothing. I successfully do nothing. Absolute success. <laughs> but if you're failing, that means that you're trying, that you're striving, that you're trying to do something bigger, something better, something more important to you, something that will have more impact on the world. Failure is a dress rehearsal for success, and it is through failure that you can literally purify yourself. You see, many times you fail because you're not ready to succeed, because you may have some thoughts that are incongruent with where you want to go. You have to fail so that you can think a new thought. Sometimes you fail because you may not feel worthy of the success you, 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 you're seeking. So you, you fail to give you a chance to, to think a new, a new thought about yourself, to get a new feeling about yourself. Many times failure is like a, a pruning process to help remove thoughts and emotions and habits and people from your space who can't go the next journey with you. There are a lot of people who have come where you are, but who can't go where you're going. You need to just focus on that for a minute. There are many people who have come with you to the point where you are, but they can't go where you're going. And you know who they are. People always tell you who they are. We just don't listen. Be careful of what you cling to. You know, a part of success is being alone. That there's always that time when you have to go into that secret place within you, when the external world has so much stuff going on that you can't really come clear, that you need to go through some things. Remember this. 
whatever you cling to can control you. So if you cling to a bad relationship, it can control you. If you cling to bad habits, one of my workmen, great skills, great, but he's a drunk. And he clings to being an alcoholic. He clings to it, and therefore it controls him. Step five, know your worth. So many, sometimes we may sell ourselves cheaply. We may accept less than we know that we deserve. Let me say that again. Sometimes in life, we accept less than we know what we deserve. But whatever you accept, you get. Really focus on your true value, your true talents, the great gifts you bring to, the, to the, any situation. Know the value of your thoughts. Know the value of your emotions. Know the value of your good habits. Know the value of your strong relationships. Anybody who is your friend, anybody that you permit to come into your life should be an asset to you. Should confirm the value that you have for yourself. If you let people in your life who tear you down, who talk negatively about you, who criticize you out of jealousy and envy, they're going to take you down. If you cling to it, it will control you. Your self-worth is the filter through which your life experiences pass. Sometimes people say, I have a low self-esteem. Well, if you have a low self-esteem, everything in your life will be filtered through low self-esteem. And so people who will treat you bad, they will be attracted to you. Situations that bring you bad things will be attracted to you. Know your true worth. Step six. Develop the habit of being goal-oriented. And this just means that whatever the task you have to do, approach it from a goal perspective. If it's something as simple as, I got to be to work every day on time. I, I want to be to work 15 minutes early every day. Beautiful. Now, you, that's your stated goal. You plan to do it. You write it down. You plan it. You execute the plan in steps, doable steps. So that may mean if I want to be at work 15 minutes early, then when I'm supposed to be there, then I'll lay out my clothes the night before. Then I'll get the train, I'll get the car, I'll get the bus, whatever, 15 minutes early. Then I'll allow for traffic and all those things that can happen along the way. You see, when you have that habit of being goal-oriented, I had a teacher, Tiamo, and he used to say, did you complete yourself about whatever the task was? That was it. Did you complete yourself? If it was as simple a task as go to the store and bring back some bottled water. Well, you may go to the store and they're out of bottled water and you come back with nothing. No, when you complete yourself, you go to the store, they have no bottled water, go to another store. They have no bottled water. In other words, you do it until it is done. The stronger you become by doing it, by hanging in there, by being goal-oriented, it builds your faith. Every goal that you accomplish builds your faith. The greater your faith, the more you can accomplish. So it becomes a self-fulfilling prophecy. Each goal that you achieve enhances your faith in yourself, enhances your confidence, enhances your, com your commitment, enhances your ability to achieve greater success. Every, it's, it's so much like a stair step. You go up one step. You get on that step. You enjoy it, and then you realize there's another step ahead of you. There's something better. There's something more. You become uncomfortable. You set a goal to get to that next step. You do it. You complete yourself. You get there. So it's always a plateau. You, you feel uncomfortable. 
you go for it, you set a goal, you accomplish it, you get it done. Step seven. You know, if we can't see it, we can't be it. And we were given an incredible gift, an incredible power, the power of imagination. So step seven is to visualize your goals and believe you can attain them. Your power of imagination gives you the ability to convert visions into reality. And the more you can imagine, the more you can be. Albert Einstein said, imagination is more powerful than knowledge because knowledge is limited when imagination is completely unlimited. If you can imagine it, you can do it. You cannot have a vision that you cannot achieve. Now, you may not be able to achieve it right then. That's okay. But the idea is to use and develop your, the skill of imagination so that you can see more. Because for next year to be your year for outrageous success, you must see a bigger and bigger and bigger picture. The bigger picture that you can see in your imagination, the bigger results you can get in your life and your reality. See yourself as though you've already achieved your goals. Jim Carrey, when he was a struggling actor, wrote him a check, himself a check for $20 million. And his in mind, he kept seeing them give him that check for $20 million. And there came a time when he got that check for $20 million. So I say to each and every one of you, what is it that you really, really want that badly? What image can you see of your mind of what you want to be, do, and have? If you can hold that image in your mind, you've planted a seed in the universe that can grow into reality. Mm -mm -mm. Number eight, plan your work and work your plan. You see, once you've laid out your goals and your objectives, you have to develop a plan, a system, a system of and rules for activity that will bring about the results that you desire. Once you analyze your goal and break it down into steps and then doable chunks, things that you must do, all you have to do is execute now to bring it about. Key point about this idea of plan your work and work your plan. Number one, your plan is always time bound. So not only must you plan your work and work your plan, you must plan your time. We can get so involved with the goal and when it will be manifested, we forget when, to, when must you start. Every goal that you have, every objective you have has a starting point. The starting point is called now. So not just work, plan your work and work your plan, but even more importantly, plan your time and time your plan. Let me say that again. Plan your time, how you will allocate your time. And then time your plan. Set schedules. Anything that you don't schedule will probably not be accomplished. And then finally, number nine. Keep going and growing. You become successful because you keep working at it. You talk to any person who's achieved anything in life and he'll tell you or she'll tell you that there were defeats, there were disappointments, there were failures, and there were so many things that did not work, but they kept working at it. Success is not an event. Success is not a destination. Success is a process. In, in our book, we say that success is the continuous realization of your worthwhile purpose. As you move further along the success path, you see more. When you see more, you can be more. If you ever quit, they say quitting demonstrates a lack of belief in yourself. Quitting, quitting demonstrates a lack of belief in the process. <coughs> Keep going and growing. Excuse me. Keep going and growing so that you can increase your consciousness 
and see more. Every time you accomplish something, you increase your vibration level. The higher your vibration level, the more you can see. The more you can see, the more you can accomplish. Every time you accomplish something, you increase your vibration level. So when you're in a harmonic with success, you are constantly going and growing. The secret to success is to be prepared to do whatever it takes for as long as it takes until you get there. So let us wrap up today. We've covered some powerful points. And let us go back and just revise and revisit them so that you can have them clearly in your mind and you can act on them. Number one, the, the context in which we are teaching today is the context of choice. In the universe, you basically have three things operating. You have change, you have principle, and you have choice. And so you choose each day, you choose each moment whom you will serve. So all the things that you do be and have next month, next year, will be a result of your choices. And then follow the nine steps, the blueprint. The blueprint, do not procrastinate. Don't put off anything. Number two, be committed to do it now, that there's always something you can do right now to take you closer to your goal. Number three, to stand on your own two feet. Don't wait for someone else or somebody else to come and help you get where you want to go. Be committed to get it done. Number four, don't fear failure. Failure is proof positive that you're trying and is dress rehearsal for success. You literally fail your way to success. Number five, know your true value. Don't let anyone or anything undervalue you. Don't let anyone or anything treat you in a way that does not honor who you are. Because if you accept it, you will get it. Develop the success habit of being goal-oriented to always operate with the perspective of accomplishment and completion. No matter what it is, no matter how simple it is, everything is a task to be completed. Number seven, use your visualization. Visualize your goals and believe you can attain them. Use your imagination to give you the ability to see more because when you can see more, you can be more. Number eight, plan your work. Work your plan, but even more importantly, plan your time and time your plan. And then finally, number nine, keep going and growing. It's an evolutionary process, folks. As long as you keep going and growing, nothing is impossible. To live your life in such a way that every day you start with a positive mental attitude. You visualize and focus on your goals. You carefully make your plans. You write them down in great detail, and then you execute your plans. You produce desired results. You want to live your plan so that you, you get to the end of each day and you say to yourself, did I do everything I could today to make tomorrow the way I want it to be? Well, when you're operating at optimum efficiency and optimum level to create outrageous success, you'll always answer the daily question. And it is a daily question. You'll always be able to say, I did everything I could with what I had to do it with to make tomorrow the way I want it to be. Knowing that you can be what you want to be. You can do what you want to do. You can have whatever you want to have. Always knowing that the best is yet to come. And so it is.